So the U.S. government is warning law enforcement to remain vigilant for potential copycat attacks following the Buffalo supermarket shooting in May that left 10 people dead. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security assessed hundreds of pages of online posts from the accused Buffalo gunman. They say the suspect had invited others to view these posts minutes before the deadly attack. Authorities believe that he intended them to serve as a, quote, manual for future attackers. So CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga has been following this story for us, and she joins me now on the phone. Nicole, uh, can you sort of go a little bit further into the scope of what was included in this document? Emery, good to be with you. And as you noted, DHS, FBI, and the National Counterterrorism Center here assessing that a 180-page manifesto and a 672-page online diary written by the alleged gunman in the Buffalo attack intended to serve as some sort of manual for future attackers. And law enforcement here concerned this spread of this information will likely enhance the capabilities of potential mass casualty shooters who might be inspired by this writing. Now, there are two re main reasons why federal law enforcement remains concerned. The first, this writing contains tactics, techniques, and procedures used by the alleged uh, attacker in the Buffalo shooting, everything from weapon modification to the types of body armor this individual sought out. Now, I'm not going to get into too many specifics regarding the writings themselves, not wanting to amplify further these calls to violence. But what I will say is the alleged gunman in this case, as our viewers know, chose a predominantly black neighborhood in Buffalo. And prosecutors have noted he espoused white supremacist ideas. There is a demonstrated history of racially motivated violent extremists citing inspiration from previous attackers, and the use of this information online, the spread of domestic violent extremism online, has contributed to this further. So how do we know about sort of how the document was spread, where it was posted, and just how many people have read it? Yeah, so law enforcement has refrained from saying exactly how many people have read it, but it has been over three months since the attacker first shared uh, his writings with individuals minutes before he carried out this mass casualty attack. And we know that it has risen uh, to a level of concern for law enforcement that they felt the need to disseminate this information to uh, police nationwide in hopes that perhaps, uh, you know, any sort of observation of an uptick uh, of, of the spreading of this material uh, would trigger something for law enforcement or even members of the community. And, and in particular, law enforcement's worried about lone offenders who espouse these sort of false, dangerous beliefs in white supremacy. They're particularly susceptible to these ideas, oftentimes acting alone and seeking out tactics in an online community as opposed to a physical one. Now, it's harder for federal law enforcement in those cases to connect the dots. Oftentimes, after these attacks occur, we say, look at all of these red flags uh, that there were online, but the reality is federal law enforcement is faced with a barrage of violent extremist online chatter that they are swimming through constantly. And that remains uh, the challenge here in light of how far and wide this information has spread. Yeah, and, you know, we're literally talking about stuff that's being posted from all over the world. It's, it's difficult to keep track of, to say the least. Um, in your article, you write that federal law enforcement warned that lone offenders may be particularly susceptible to the materials. Why lone offenders? Yeah, so lone offenders, Anne-Marie, are, are particularly susceptible because they do seek out these ideas, these tactics, these procedures in online communities. And as, you know, former F or current FBI Director Christopher Wray has, has noted, it's also more challenging for federal law enforcement to oftentimes uh, spot these sort of homegrown uh, lone wolf violent extremists. Uh, you know, they're not part of a larger organization, group, or structure. Uh, namely, they just gain this sort of inspiration online. And we should also point out to our viewers, Anne-Marie, that this threat is pervasive across borders. You mentioned uh, sort of its international, uh, you know, nature here. Uh, we often think about, when we think about these mass casualty attacks, some of the more recent horrific and tragic ones, the 2019 shooting in El Paso or Poway, California, the 2015 shooting uh, at a church in Charleston, South Carolina, a 2018 shooting in uh, Pittsburgh at Tree of Life Synagogue. But th this is an international 
uh, challenge. And so, uh, you know, the 2011 shooting that occurred in Norway, uh, the 2019 shooting in Christchurch, New Zealand. The reason I bring up all of these different particular attacks, Anne-Marie, is because all of them were mentioned in these over 800 pages disseminated online by the alleged Buffalo uh, gunman here. And so the concern uh, that others will seek inspiration out from not only his attack, but those that came prior. And, and we know that there is a history of that. Nicole Sanga, thank you very much.